kills more people, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, than TB. So in sub-Saharan Africa, there worldwide, there are about one million cases per year of this infection. And of those, about 670,000 will die every year in sub-Saharan Africa. It's not a disease that has received a lot of attention over the last, um, what, three decades that we've had uh, HIV. But just to sort of bring this back home, the research has been going on as far as this infection is concerned over the last, you know, maybe 15, uh, 20 years. The initial research that we had was mainly with the Medical Research Council in Entebbe. And one of the interesting things they found was that when they screened, meaning when they did certain tests to, to find out if patients who had started uh, H when HIV care had this infection, they found that there were about 40 cases per 1,000 uh, people who actually had the, whose test was positive. Now, interestingly, they found that if at the time that people were starting their H HIV drugs or their HIV care, if they did this test and it was positive, but at the time they may not necessarily have had symptoms, it turned out that within three months, almost 60% of them were dead because they had developed the overt symptoms of this infection. Mulago sees about 250 to 300 patients with cryptococcal meningitis uh, every year. And of these, 20% will die in hospital while being treated. Sometimes it's because the treatment is either not adequate, the drugs that are used are expensive, and uh, interestingly, what Jennifer probably didn't mention is that through MJAP we've been able to, they've been able to supply the drug. It's, it's called amphotericin, it's an antifungal drug for treating patients who have this infection. On the market, it probably costs about $10 per dose, and you need to have 14 doses. So that's about $140, which even for me is, that's a lot of money to spend on a daily basis. So imagine if you're sick and you, you know, you don't have resources, it's, you know, that's, that's a lot of money to be spending. But thankfully through MJAP, and that's why MJAP should never stop its funding, <laughs> you know, we've, we've definitely been able to, to save a lot of patients, at least they've been able to get treatment. Sometimes they'll die because they have other infections. So through the Infectious Disease Institute, um, you know, the college, we've been able to conduct research here for the last five years or so, uh, specifically relating to cryptococcal meningitis. And some of the issues we've now found out, by if you had 100 patients who started out with this infection, they get admitted to Malago. By the time you're six months down the road, unfortunately, only, only 40 of them are still alive. So 60% of these patients die, you know, within the first six months of acquiring this infection. And even TB doesn't come that close. And yet this is an infection that hasn't had as much uh, publicity and, you know, education as far as patient care is concerned. However, we believe that things are changing. Uh, one of the issues as far as this infection is concerned is uh, the negative perception that's related to performing what they call of making a diagnosis of this infection. So in order to make a diagnosis of this infection, you have to put a needle in somebody's back, take off some of the fluid that everyone has, and then take it to the lab, and that's when they discover that you have that infection, and then the treatment is started. Unfortunately, and I am sure, you know, not just people sitting on this side, but people sitting on the media as well, I'm sure you've heard about uh, that procedure, uh, either a relative has had it and unfortunately they've died. And so by that time, as human beings, we tend to link things, okay? And so if, if somebody brings a patient to hospital, they have that procedure, not because of the procedure, but because it was sort of really late, they happen to die. The assumption and the link will be that, you know, in people's minds, when they did this procedure on my patient, they died. Therefore, that procedure killed the patient. And it's the same thing with a lot of things, like putting people on oxygen. 
many mothers will say, you know, my child died because they were put on oxygen. Mm. So the other interesting thing is that in, with this specific infection, if they take off the fluid from your back, it helps to reduce the main symptoms that they present with, which include headache, uh, problems with their vision, uh, sometimes they may have convulsions, and sometimes people are brought in with, uh, the, you know, when they've lost consciousness. So doing the, that, what they call the lumbar puncture, sometimes helps to alleviate those symptoms and actually improve uh, patient's outcome. However, the challenge is to how to deal with improving perceptions of the public on you know, having those lumbar punctures done. And so we've developed some education materials that sort of at least help people to understand that you know, if your patient, your relative has this uh, procedure, the most important thing is that we will find out what infection they have.